In Genesis chapter 3, right at the heart of the false story, God speaks to the serpent that impersonates the devil. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This first prophetic statement about the coming of the Messiah is the peak of a beautiful chiasm. Verse 16, which comes right after this promise, parallels verse 13, which comes right before it. To the woman he, that is God, said, and the Lord God said to the woman. Check also the beginning of verse 17 and compare it with the beginning of verse 9. Then to Adam he, that is God, said, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him. Verse 21. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Isn't that a counterpart of verse 7? And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Similarly, when God says in the first part of verse 22, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil, recalls what the serpent said in verse 5, You will be like God, knowing good and evil. And again, when God says in the last part of verse 22, Lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, echoes the way the woman misquotes God in verse 3, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. And finally, in verse 1, the serpent asks Eve, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Of course not. But that's exactly what happens in the end. Verse 24, So he, God, drove out the man, that is, from the garden. Pretty sad, isn't it? Nevertheless, nevertheless, the focus of this story is the Messiah, the Savior. Shalom.